Our next presenter is Marco Bertelli, um, who is a psychiatrist and psychotherapist in the Scientific Director of the Research and Clinical Center in Florence. Marco, I'm not going to try to pronounce where you work. Um, he'll be presenting on relating quality of life measurement to the lived experience of the person with PWS and their families. So Marco, I will hand it over to you. I want to share with you some reflection on quality of life as an outcome measure beside personal well-being, well-being in general, starting from a reflection on the difference between quality of life and well-being, which is not easy to get. There are a number of different opinions on the difference. I'll try to summarize one of these. The first specification is the distinction between the traditional uh, medical approach to uh, mental health issues, disabilities, and any other kind of illness, and the person-centered quality of life approach. The first aim to restore the structural and functional integrity, while the second aims to help the person to be as much satisfied as possible with, one, with his own life or her own life. So it's a completely different approach. I would say not only integrative, but probably alternative to the medical one, because sometimes we have to choose between the two. The quality of life approach is part of uh, the so-called person-centered approaches or outcome measures, which are also conceptual reference for the planning of interventions in persons with any kind of developmental disabilities, but disabilities more generally. And it is strictly related to the human entitlement to a life of quality and to the universality of human characteristics from one side, but from the other side also to the uniqueness of human needs, behaviors, and performances and even choices. So the per participational, participative decision, I would say, and also to the human attitude to self-fulfillment, which is linked in turn to other very basic psychological concepts such as self-perception or self-image or self-esteem, if you want. And also to all is, of course, it relates to an holistic approach to human life and also to the dynamic nature of human life, which is linked to growth, improvement across life. And of course, it implies a lifespan approach. In Italy, our national committee of bioethics produced 20 years ago uh, a very interesting position statement trying to provide a new definition of health, basing on the concept of capacity to live in a mindful and free way, but above all, to increase the value of all one's own energies. Other authors would have said capabilities, probably starting from the Amartya Sen conceptualization. And of course, the disease is intended to be the opposite. So health is not a given status, but it's a pursuit. Uh, it's a pathway to follow across time, across the whole lifespan. And it doesn't imply, it doesn't imply the final achievement of, of it. So in, to some extent is also a way of seeing things or considering things. So when we talk about quality of life, we have to precise the meaning because you know it is a very polysemic, polyconceptual term. And uh, in a very rough way, you have at least to distinguish, to distinguish uh, objective and subjective perspective while considering quality of life and probably also other person-centered outcome measures. In quality of life, you have at least to distinguish between so call it shared components of quality of life and personal components. But recently also family components of quality of life, which probably relate to another concept of quality of life, which consider the full system around the person with Prader-Willi syndrome and 
any other kind of uh, developmental disability. So the so-called shared characteristics refer to human life and human environments that are common to or shared with other people. So it is relatively easy to assess the so-called shared characteristics of quality of life, even in person with severe intellectual disability or very low functioning autism, autism with high support need. Although to date, no consensus has been reached within the specific community on what we exactly mean, we exactly as, expect to assess when we apply this concept. In fact, different tools to assess quality of life refer to different areas or domain. We use two different terms in according to different frames. The personal aspects of quality of life refer to individual characteristics or individual values, which to some extent respond to personal genetic makeup or individual personality or personal environmental conditions. So we have to consider that all individuals have unique characteristics and interests that are sometimes very meaningful in their life and thus may add to their life a lot of quality, but may mean very little or nothing for other persons. So if we consider quality of life as mainly a personal concept, I think that this aspect, the personal ones, have a fundamental, represent a fundamental reference for the extension and the application of the concept. Then we have family quality of life, which considered that disability impacts the old family and the determination of appropriate conceptualization of family outcomes requires an understanding of the impact of members with a disability on family quality of life. Or members of the family, including a person with a disability. And to date, it is considered that quality of life referred to the family involves at least three main issues that research has explored across the recent years that are stress and caregiving burden, impact on family functioning, overall family functioning, and of course, eco-cultural adaptation. Quality of life is not exactly subjective well-being. Many authors distinguish quality of life from subjective well-being, basing on the fact that quality of life includes some shared aspects of individual quality of life or individual well-being. While subjective well-being is often mainly referred to uh, affective states, positive or negative, which are limited in time. That's why sometimes well-being is confounded with uh, happiness. And this is not as easy in the field of quality of life. And uh, some authors, including Professor Cummins, uh, arrived to say that to support the idea that when we talk about quality of life, the aspects more strictly linked to the personal subjective well-being are the less reliable for the assessment because they would depend too much on the so-called affective cognitive individual homeostatic system. So uh, this would be to some extent an explanation of the so-called disability paradox in quality of life. You know that the very first studies show that many persons with disability reported the perception of individual quality of life, which was even higher than that of the majority of persons in the general population without disability, the so-called disability paradox, which might be explained at least to some extent with an excessive inclusion of very, very personal aspects related to subjective well-being. So it's a very complex issue. And quality of life has also to be distinguished 
uh, with the so-called health-related one. I mean, the very old person quality of life is something very different from that that in the literature is called health-related quality of life, which mainly refers to a strange mixture of clinical and dysfunctioning aspects compared again to the normality. So of course it is important to consider the impact that symptoms and dysfunctions and disabilities have on individual perception of well-being and satisfaction, but, but we do not have to refer only to the intensity of symptoms and their pervasiveness and their uh, frequency and so forth. So there are many tools which pretend to, me to measure quality of life, but in reality, they measure something like this. So the intensity and pervasivity of symptoms or disability or functional impairment. So quickly to conclude, let's give a, 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 a view to uh, the main instrument that are used internationally to assess generic whole person quality of life. This is the one of the WHO, the project who, called, who started many, many years ago at the half of last century. And the areas here included are physical well being, psychological well being, level of independence, social relationship, environment, and personal belief and spirituality, which is very important. Another model, the one produced within the frame of the UN rights for persons with disability, which it was produced by Martin Nussbaum, starting from the theories of Amartya Sen, as you can see, is mainly referred to rights. Here, the areas of quality of life are the same than rights. I think that is not right because rights represent uh, a premise probably to quality of life, but not coincide, are not the same thing as quality of life. When we refer to the individual perception of satisfaction within the most important areas of life for the person themselves. Another model of quality of life, which is quite diffused across the world is the American one produced by Robert Shallock and uh, colleagues, which as you can see includes eight domain, but not spirituality, for example, which is considered the specific indicator of emotional well-being. But the main limit of this problem, I think it's the again the eye overlap with rights and functioning, as proposed again by the World Health Organization within the ICF model, the classification of functioning, the international classification of functioning. And another limit is that indicators do not allow to me to describe the best level, the personal individual aspects of quality of life. My favorite model is the one produced in Canada by Professor Ivan Brown, that is his group in Toronto. And it includes these three main areas and nine sub areas. So the main areas, the macro areas are being, belonging and becoming. And the sub areas are physical being, psychological and spiritual being. Then belonging physical, belonging social and belonging to the community and becoming is divided into practical and leisure and growth becoming. But the most important thing is this model is the very high consideration of very personal aspects, which includes importance and satisfactions attributed and perceived to any area of life, but also the opportunity given to a person to develop importance and to perceive satisfaction. And among opportunities, the personal decision, the decisional participation, which is an opportunity itself maybe, but it's so important that it deserves a specific consideration. Then the indicators, which are 
very practical, observable, or, or if you want also behavioral aspects that you can catch in daily life that can express for every individual according to the perception also of his or her proxies, the level of importance attributed, satisfaction perceived, opportunities received, and choice, and so forth. So the best way, according to this model, to assess quality of life is to combine self-assessment and proxy assessment or other person assessment, including those with, who are not that near to the person with disability we want to assess quality of life. So according to my research in this area to date, the best way to approach quality of life is to integrate qualitative and quantitative aspects, subjective and objective positions, areas of life with proven transcultural value, the so-called any transcultural domain or areas of quality of life, and also to consider dimensions to assess very personal aspects. And of course, include indicators to support selfie and proxy, quantitative grading and reliability and comparison. Because as previously said, our attempt is to define a system of value which is aligned as much as possible with that of the person with prado willi syndrome. Finally, these are the domains that uh, to date have been included in uh, for family quality of life in the family quality of life approach. So health, financial well-being, family relationship, support from others, support from services, influence and values, including spirituality, careers and preparation for careers, leisure and recreation, community interaction. And the personal individual aspects for family quality of life are to some extent the same that we consider for the individual, plus attainment, initiative and stability. Thank you for your attention. I hope not have been too long in the presentation.